What's up everyone, today we'll be taking a look at the tier 7 German battleship Scharnhorst. Now, Scharnhorst is a premium ship, and in my opinion it has been power crept the past few, probably year I would say, since it came, a uh, year, a little more than a year ago since it came out. And, of course this is one of the first um, German pocket battleships that Wargaming came out with, besides the Graf Spee. And, yeah, the thing about the Scharnhorst compared to ships like Turpitz and Bismarck is that she has 283mm guns compared to 380mm guns. Now, that's a significant decrease in pen, but there, I see the one advantage to that is that it can actually pen armor that is slightly... It can, full, it can do a full penetration instead of an overpen compared to 380mm guns. So aiming at, like, the, the um, mid-bow or... The hole um, on the when you're enemy showing broadside to you, aiming at the upper broadside, where that juicy area is, you can be able to get some pretty good penetrations on it. And yeah, the Scharnhorst, um, like all German battleships, have pretty good secondaries. The secondaries can't do a lot of pen. At least the 150s can pen up to I think 30 something millimeters, 36 millimeters of armor. And the 105s are more there just to set fires. So yeah, armor scheme of Scharnhorst, um, it's okay. The front and the back have 26 millimeters of plating, the fore and aft parts, so that is farmable. And your superstructure is also pretty sizable, so you will get farmed by destroyers and basically all sorts of cruisers. You can see the deck's made of wood. And what I've noticed about wooden ships is that, I don't know if it's just a trend or something about fire chance, but they tend to catch on fire quicker. So yeah. Besides that, your secondary range isn't as impressive as Bismarck's or Turpets, but if you build it fully for secondaries, it is 8 kilometers. I am running Gunther Legions right now, so my goal is to basically, it's two brothers and matchmaking is actually pretty favorable to us, as you can see there's only tier 5s here, and we're actually top tier, and top tier or odd tier 7 is where Scharnhorst actually really shines, because she doesn't have to worry about armor that is too hard for her guns to pen, because 283 guns will have problem penning angle targets such as Musashi or Tsumo at tier 9. So right off the bat, I think I'm just going to go for a mid-rush, because I would suspect that at this tier, maybe everyone will split down the sites evenly. Now, the odd thing is, I have not seen several of the any battleships. Two of them, I think. I haven't seen the Kaiser and the Koning on the screen, so I assume they're probably up the middle, so kind of getting my guns ready. And, yeah... Our team so far is kind of bunching up behind me. I I would think they're trying to commit um, to follow me, but and they do just split up in the end. So for consumables, I'm running the heel. Obviously, that's like the standard um, German heel, and then the catapult fighter. Now, a lot of days people say catapult fighter is probably useless against aircraft carriers, but I would say not. It actually. Catapult fighters actually do shoot down a decent amount. Like at this tier tier 7, I think the fighters have enough ammo to shoot down three planes, and that's an entire attacking squad off an enemy bomber group, so it does help a lot. And in games without carriers, the catapult fighter is actually a very useful spotting tool because it increases it allows you to spot over islands, and in this case, I'm actually going to launch my cat I think I do launch my catapult fighter here to take a better look of what's behind this rock right here. So I do know that there's gonna be a Kaiser and a Koning, so I'm kind of pointing my guns in that direction. 283 millimeter guns, definitely can overmatch, not overmatch, well, pen, Kaiser and Koning, and there is the Kaiser and Koning right there. So at the bat, I go for the Kaiser's turrets. I take two of them out, luckily, the guns do pen, and then the another two go into the superstructure and land into the deck. This is where Luchens comes in really well, because I, I just got Luchens after the super container update, where I got like 45,000, 50,000 coal from all the crates, and yeah, secondary battery talent is pretty good. So, the good thing about Scharnhorst is, she has torpedoes on each side, and that's pretty atypical for battleships of the German line, except for premium ones. Let's so organize and how to. That torp is literally gonna hurt the Kaiser off, I just need to get one more good salvo in under, and she's dead. I don't have manual secondaries yet, but this range, our secondaries are almost guaranteed to hit the target unless they're drunk. I am flipping over to the Koning right here. And as you know, German battleships have pretty poor torpedo protection. It's actually around like 17 to 19% on most of them, so 
They do take ridiculous amounts of torpedo damage. And the Koenig over here seems a bit clueless because he beaches himself. He's trying to turn his guns toward me, but by the time he's going to finish turning his guns toward me, he will die. As you can see here, I'm kind of zooming out a bit because I do notice that there's a cruiser on my left side and I have not seen him for a bit. And that is the perf, I believe, so I'm turning my guns toward him. I'm kind of speeding up, popped my heel there. Heel will counteract most fire and flooding. I think it heals 100% of your fire and flooding damage, but as for pens, not so much. And yeah, I do turn my guns there because I know the perf. I'm detected I know the perf is also detected. So my secondaries go off. I'm a bit hesitant here to shoot because I do want to get the 100 secondary hits so for the command for the Commander Luchins. If you do get 100 secondary hits, your reload time of your secondaries increases by 15%, especially for German battleships where secondaries are so important. Well, not important, but actually powerful enough so it's worth inspecting it. That if I do hit the 100, I will get secondary batteries that fire like little machine guns, basically. So as you see, the perf is trying to fire AP at me, but all of it's bouncing. I do not know why he's not firing some more at me. There goes the secondary talent. You can see immediately, you already noticeably, um, the secondaries are shooting a lot faster. I do like the colored tracers too. There goes the perf. It's just two destroyers in this Colorado. And the weird thing I'm kind of afraid of right now is where the Fubuki is on their enemy team, because I know the Akatsuki is on the left flank getting chased down by my team, but this Fubuki has not been detected once in this game. So there's torpedoes from the perf. I do kind of overcommit to the turn here because I kind of want to get some three shots off the Colorado, and I do end up taking a torpedo on the stern. There's the flooding. Gutting off the heel. Now the Colorado does notice me and he's starting to turn toward me to engage me. I'm trying to show just enough broadside so I can get my full secondary batteries on him. The 8 kilometer range is pretty helpful. Now without the secondary battery accuracy mod you can see you don't get that many hits but once you close the distance at that point your secondaries literally have nowhere else to f land. Well, you can land all over the ship but basically that. To get the high caliber chin there. I am pushing straight to this Colorado because I know I have my team backing me up. I don't know where the enemy destroyer is, but since I'm not detected behind this island, it means he's definitely not to my left. Launch a preemptive set of torps because I think this Colorado is going to get forced into a straight line move past the island because he also has torpedoes coming in from behind him. I'm trying to turn as hard to port side as possible, not to show that much broadside, but the call does get a juicy hit here. It does get another juicy hit here. I did not angle enough. There goes one of my secondary batteries. Just a pretty good efficiency right there. Our last torpedo is going to take out the Colorado. At this point, I think, well, we basically won, and I do not know where the Fubuki is. I would assume he's on the other side. Um, he's on the round the A, 1, 2, or 3 line because I haven't been detected yet. And this is the funny part right here. The Fubuki actually has snuck all the way throughout the map, all the way into the other side of our base, basically. So I have no idea how exactly he got there, but yeah, that is kind of confusing how he got there. He must have taken either the A1 line or the A10 line and sailed all the way down. <laughs> You're going to try to see that the enemy team is... Thinking that this Fubuki is either <laughs> too smart or a bit dumb. I immediately ping my team to quickly go back to base and defend because I'm in the vicinity of their base so I can start capturing it. However, I am positioning myself to go back down to straight just in case our team decides not to go there and I have to intercept them because I know we will not be able to flip the cap fast enough. I think we actually can flip the cap, cap fast enough if we get more teammates in so it's going to be fine. At this point, in such a small battle, I already got 120k damage, I'm pretty satisfied, and I would like the Kraken, so I am kind of pulling up to the straight right now. Fortunately for us, the Fubuki is detected, so our team I'm just watching my team kind of like fire him down, whittle them down. I'm getting ready to position myself here, so in case the Fubuki comes up the straight, I can catch him off guard. So at this point, the battle is basically over at the end. The Fubuki just gets perma spotted by our Akatsuki, and our teammates do manage to finish him off. 
So I'm gonna just speed by this part, and we're gonna skip to the captain build and upgrades. Hey everyone, if my voice does sound different, we are using different recording software. It's just simpler for me to record using the Xbox Game Bar in game compared to um, watching the video and then commentating on it. So, here we have the Sharn Horse. I am running Luchins. Let's go over the Captain build first. So, as you know, I just got this guy, so 10 points. I'm trying to grind up the points for it, and I feel like ships just Turpits, Odin, and Sharn Horse are some of the best or favorite ships at least for me to play, or comfortable ships for me to play to grind it up. So obviously I start with priority target. I would get preventive maintenance if I do have extra dough though, but first I want to get manual secondaries. I would say go priority target first. Obviously you know how many people are aiming at you. Adrenaline rush. I would say this is an essential in all during battleships, just because the more health you lose, the more quicker your reload increases, and that'll help all your guns, secondaries included. I do run basics of survivability because that does increase, decrease the time needed to repair your fire and your flooding and on German battleships since you're getting set on fire all the time, it's basically a must. And then I went with advanced firing training to increase my secondary range. Next thing I would say you go for is manual fire control for secondaries because this will increase the secondary accuracy ridiculously high, not ridiculously but reasonably high that you'll see that you'll hit more tar shots on target. And then after that, I would go for Superintendent. I'll bring up to 70 points right there. And then you can either go for Expert Marksman or Jack of All Trades if you want to reload your heal faster. And then I would say go for Preventive Maintenance. And Preventive Maintenance is actually pretty good on Lugins because your torpedo tubes under your mouseships tend to break pretty quick. So yeah, this might be a higher priority than Expert Marksman or Jack of All Trades. And of course you have all the special personalization stuff for Luchins. And here we have the talents. The most important ones here are the secondary armament expert. Very good for your secondaries. At higher tiers, especially tier 8 through 10, your secondaries become majorly powerful once you activate this. Colored shell tracers. I do recommend running them just for myself because I like the visual effects, but I do understand why some people would choose to demount this because the colored shell tracers do get in the way of tracking your shells to where they're going because sometimes it might be kind of hard to see where your shells are landing on the enemy ship so i would see why other streamers or youtubers would put this off but yeah that is the captain build as for equipment obviously main armaments modification secondaries is not really that worth it here on the sharn horse because your guns on the 283s do tend to break you want to keep those alive and your torpedo tubes as well here i would go damage con System 1, I don't have it mounted right now or bought it because I'm trying to save up for the Minotaur. Secondary battery, modification 1, just increase your range and your accuracy. And obviously damage control party, modification 2. Now, as for consumables, Catapult Fighter I would say is the most useful out of all of these. I'm not really a big fan of using spotting aircraft, I've not mastered how to aim with it yet. So, But if you do, spotting aircraft is pretty good if you want to take snipes because Charmers' guns are kind of trolly in the German sense, but they're not that bad once you close the distance compared to other German guns. As you can see, only a 71 arm millimeters of pen for the HE. You have your 105s, your 150s, which obviously pen 38 millimeters of armor, and this one does 26 millimeters. Sorry, I wrote that wrong. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at the armor layout. Now, armor layout of the ship. As I was saying before, the entire deck plating is basically 30. Um, this deck plating right here is 50 millimeters. You have a 50 millimeter layer right here on the top and 26 fore and aft, which can be farmed reasonably well. Your superstructure, 16 millimeters. It is pretty big and sizable. It can be farmed. And the cool thing about Shrine is you actually have this little piece of armor right here, the 70 millimeter belt in the front. 
that tanks incoming fire. So if you're bow tanking, you actually will be able to bounce some things and you won't, your citadel is not that vulnerable. But I have seen cases where in tier 9s, you can get overmatched. 70 millimeters is overmatchable by 457 millimeter guns. I believe it is overmatchable by 457 millimeter guns. So yeah, if I take off the superstructure, it's 50 millimeter deck. And yeah, that's basically all it for the Scharnhorst. So what I say to get the Scharnhorst, well right now in the shop, I believe it's around, I'm not sure if it's 27 or $37, around that range. It is a worthy buy in my opinion. It is a fun ship to play, but it is it has been power crept over the past few, um, over the past few months, obviously, with the introduction of more HE spamming ships and tier 9 matchmaking kind of screwing over tier 7s. Tier 7s these days don't get that good matchmaking, you mostly get paired against tier 9s, and fortunately for me, I got paired against tier 10s, so yeah. Or, I mean, sorry, tier 5s and 6s, so that was a bit lucky, and yeah, I would recommend this ship though. Concealment, pretty good. Maneuverability, German enough. A, it's kind of anemic, not really gonna do much. You're gonna shoot down some planes. Your cattle fighter will definitely shoot down some planes, but a strike will come in once or twice. And yeah. Tor oh, I forgot about torpedo protection. Torpedo protection on this ship is 22%. It's actually a bit more sizable than ships such as Turpets and Sharps. Actually, no, Turpets has 22. Odin has 22. Yeah, well, it's not bad, but. It's pretty bad compared to other ships such as Ohio, which is 37%, or Musashi, which has almost like a 40% torpedo reduction, 40 something percent. So yeah, that's the Sharn Horse. Pretty good ship. How I'd play this ship, I recommend always playing 1v1s or 1v2s. You should know the positions of your enemies and always try to get closed distance. Always try to find ways to take enough cover so you can close the distance and use these torpedoes because the torpedoes is the probably one of the main selling points of these ships and at close range your guns can do some serious pen damage and your secondaries can actually hit stuff so yeah thank you for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one